So, so the three suggestions I have uh, for um, for our listeners generally, you know, whenever I'm picking my team for any particular game week, firstly, I ensure that I don't let previous biases get in the way. You know, for example, if I've had a um, poor experience with a player I've owned in the past and he's in form, I don't simply uh, choose to ignore him because um, because he um, ditched me or let me down in the past. Because you know, I. Uh, I, I, I don't let uh, emotions get in the way. I, I like being rational when it comes to FPL decision making. The second thing I uh, I usually like doing, especially now that you know or the early part of the season have, have passed by, is that I, I don't really chase team value. I usually wait for um, uh, for press conferences before I make my transfers um, because you know with with the surroundings you have with COVID, etc., or you know with fixture congestion, Champions League. We can we can have injuries, so it's 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 usually better to wait till you know at least a Thursday before making the transfers. Um, and the third thing I do is pray and and hope for the best. You know, fingers crossed for uh, for having a uh, having a good uh, FL game week. I did reasonably well in game week eleven. I'll, I'll run you through my team. Firstly, I had uh, Trent um, Cancelo. Salah was my captain, and I also had Rafinha and Reese James as well. So I, I got a very um, healthy score of um, 69 points, and I'm very happy with with where I stand. I got a green arrow of around 90,000 places. I'm ranked just outside the 100k now. So I had a very successful game week, and I'm uh, I was very happy with how things went. Uh, moving on to game week 12, now there are a lot of options I can I can take with my team. Um, as you can see, I have Wardy on my bench. Uh, I, I don't have a Spurs asset, neither do I have uh, Jota. So, I mean, I can go three three ways. The first route is to basically save and, you know, set myself up with two frees and assess the situation going forward. Um, the other two options are basically to, to get in Kane for a hit. I, I can sell Wadi to Kane and, you know, fund it by, um, by a move either from Rudiger or, or Rafinha. Similarly, I can get Jota in for Rafinha and I can downgrade Rudiger if I want to go down that Jota route. Um, at the minute, I, I, I think I'll probably take a hit and, and prioritize one of Kane or Jota because I think both of them are very good options going forward and to um, and to go in into the game week without, without either of them is probably not the wisest thing to do. So I think I'll probably take a hit. Um, I'll, I'll wait for more news before I decide which which move I make, but uh, but that's uh, one of the two routes I'm, I'm likely to take this week. I mean, last week I had Foster and, and Livermento on the bench. I mean, uh, to be honest, I, I I like spot depth and I, I don't particularly mind points on the bench because, you know, it, at least it uh, means that you have a good squad and in case of any rotation kicking in, which is definitely going to be a factor in the weeks to come. It's going to be um, a crucial factor and I like bench strength. This week, I... And I have um, Livermento on the bench again, which is kind of unfortunate, but I, I really don't think I have an option because I, I do think Southampton are going to keep a clean sheet again. You know, Norwich's um, XG stats have been terrible this season. Southampton um, in the past four game weeks are the best team in terms of XG conceded. And the fact, you know, that uh, Norwich um, conceded a lot of chances down their, down their left flank where Livermanto is going to be playing. So it's going to be very uncomfortable going, having him on the bench yet again. But um, if I go ahead with the Kane or, or Jota move, I, I think that is going to be highly, highly probable. I think I'll end up with, uh, with Livermanto and either one of Mbuemo and Tony or the, on the bench. You know, I, I don't uh, primarily tend to um, focus too much on historical records, you know, between players and how they tend to fare against, um, you know, uh, uh, certain clubs. But I, I do think just just because of the, the form that Salah is in, you look at Liverpool, they're, you know, ranked by far the best team in terms of XG, big chances, shots inside the box. And Salah is top for all of those statistics, respectively, in the league himself. So I can't possibly look past him. We have like almost like um, 13, uh, 12 to 13 games in like, you know, 40, 45 days. So that's uh, the fixture schedule is going to be mad. And, you know, in terms of midweek uh, congestion, uh, the point swings can get brutal. The variances are massive. So, you know, it's very important for FPL managers not to get too disheartened if you have a good game week. And, you know, um, also it's very important not to go chasing in, in when you have a bad game week. You have to sort of back 
um, back the obvious picks. There's no point sort of risking uh, going against the template, especially at this time, um, because, you know, the, the, the swings will be brutal. And if you make uh, wise decisions and, and, you know, educated uh, sort of decisions, then uh, there's there's every chance that you will make those points up um, in most weeks uh, anyway. So, I mean, that's that's what I would suggest that, you know, just uh, just keep at it and, and play safe and um, the points will come. I would suggest um, getting in either uh, Jota or, or, or Kane because I, I think uh, either of them is, is likely to haul and I can see points in there. Uh, and I don't really think the ownership is going to be that massive anyways. Thanks for listening to this section on uh, Chasing Green Arrows podcast. Um, I, would, I would highly recommend you guys to uh, like and subscribe to the channel. These guys are doing fantastic work. And, and they deserve every bit of appreciation that comes their way. Um, and good luck for the game week. <laughs>